On the Batman 2, Andrew has been, uh, well, I mean, it's been like almost a month now, but it's, it's happened. We all knew it was coming. The Batman did very, very well. Um, and, and the sequel's coming, and everyone's talking about what to expect from the sequel, what do we want from the sequel, what should be in the sequel, what shouldn't be in the sequel. And we talked about this briefly a little while ago. And I said we might not talk about it today, but we're going to. And that's uh, someone, so a character that I believe fits into this Batman world. There's a few of them, but this is one the one that we're going to talk about today. That fits in the Batman world. We got, I think, a precursor to this character in the first Batman film, the only one. Um, and that's Jason Todd. And 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 it's easy. Everyone wants Robin in the Batman. And I'm a huge Robin fan, and I do want Robin, but I don't know if we'll ever get a true Robin character in mm-hmm. a Batman movie until we have somebody that is willing to uh, step outside the box. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I love Matt Reeves and I love Snyder and I love, I mean, it's not a kind of Robin. And I love, I love Christopher Nolan. Like those are all great films, but they're all kind of afraid. Like Nolan kind of did his Robin and I liked it. And Snyder kind of hid his Robin. And, I liked it. And, and Reeves, I don't know, but I feel like they're all kind of afraid to do Robin. Even Michael, uh, Tim Burton, the Michael Keaton, a little afraid to do Robin. They almost did Robin and they didn't. And they're like, Oh yeah, there's a punk kid. So I don't think we're going to get him, but I think Jason Todd, even if he never becomes Robin, I think Jason Todd is a is a possibility, and I think it's a it could add a lot of dimension to the story as well. Um, I, I mean, if he doesn't become Robin, you could argue, well, what's the point? But, but we have all the elements in place, and and part of what has to happen in this movie now is something's got to affect the Batman in a way, right? It can't just be whoever the villain is running around there has to be something a little bit more that touches home and in the first movie we have the aftermath of obviously his parents death and trying to figure out that history the that lineage and all of that and now we've gone past that and for me this is how i'm feeling andrew is that with jason todd that get, that opens the door to you to have more tragedy in bruce wayne's life and we saw in the first time and he kind of helped he kind of like lets that one street mug kid go and that's kind of a, that's kind of Jason Todd that characteristic is kind of a Jason Todd characteristic, you know, like precursing his Robin days. We have a street kid, so I'm thinking, what are your thoughts on Jason Todd coming in? Uh, would you be for it? And do you want to see Barry Keoghan's Joker brutally murder him? First of all, Matt Reeves, please just call the movie The Batman Two, please. I think it's going to be that. I miss numbers so much, man. Like, what happened? What happened to us as a society where we're well, embarrassed about numbers? Film trivia for you. There they were never really numbers. For sequels, were never really numbers. They were just like a whole new name for the movie. And The Godfather Part 2, Coppola had, to, I believe, fought for the Part 2 and not to be a different title of the movie. And uh, so, really, it's only been 50 50 years where we've had numbers in the t- I kind of like when they're not uh when they're not numbered though I kind of like when they're a little creative I think Batman's gonna be planning too but that's just some trivia for you Andrew I like when they're creative with a number Friday the 13th part eight Jason takes Manhattan best sequel title ever like I don't know why that's not the gold standard anyway Jason Todd um you know what I will I'm on board for Jason Todd but I'm going to put an asterisk next to that sentence. Uh, Cause you're right, man. Like the tragedy of Jason can really throw a, a cool twist into this dark story that Reeves was telling. Um, I just want them to, I want them to go the route of Jason Todd is there. He gets murdered. And then that's it. I don't want any red hood revenge crap. Cause honestly, I find the Red Hood kind of the most boring member of the Bat family. You know, everybody's this cool vigilante, you know, whatever. And he's like, hi, I have guns. Um, and he's he's just bland. Like, he just feels like a nameless thug to me who just happens to wear red. Like, uh, And I really didn't like the idea of like, no, we saw him beaten to a pulp with a crowbar, but no, nah, he's alive. Uh, I just hate that. I hate when death is just canceled. So bring him in kill him and end his story there. I think, I don't think he would come back in the Reeves. You know, I, I just think if someone dies in the Reeves verse, I think they're going to be dead unless there's more than just him coming back as another vigilante. I don't think that's the point, but I think his death works. I think his death at the hand of the Joker will be, it could be even more traumatic, traumatic for the Batman because 
we know that the Batman and Joker have a history together, right? In in that movie that we saw, right? They have a history together. I guess we don't know that because it's a deleted scene. But he's in Arkham, so we can. I think you would still assume that they have a connection there, anyway. Yeah. And the, so what what would happen is the events of the first movie that Batman kind of led to those events occurring, right? Like he's kind of the reason those events came because he was vengeance and the Riddler was like, we're the same thing, you and I. Like it's, it's his fault that those events happened. And because of that, that would allow Arkham to kind of go up in flames and allow Joker to remove. So so Jason Todd's death would almost, he could almost view that as being his fault because everything that happened now is has led to Jason Todd, you know, him looking at Jason Todd, which leads to the Joker killing him. And the Joker, everything to do with the Joker is basically the Batman's fault at that point after after arkham and i think that could that could really work for the character batman bruce wayne obviously and for the movie itself because these movies you know it used to be like what villain's gonna show up (laughs) but now like with matt reeves it feels like every villain is serving a purpose that he's not just going to throw scarecrow in it because you know someone on twitter is like i really want to see scarecrow it's like well why is scarecrow going to be in it here's why but it's not just because of the way he's going to affect Batman's can be how does he affect Gotham does he affect everything around him and I think that's the one thing that Jason Todd can bring to it with the Joker's kid and I'm not and 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 I've said this before it's like the Joker I don't think should ever be your main antagonist in this series uh because the series is bigger than that it might be Court of Owls it might be whatever but the Joker's a part of the world the Riddler's a part of the world Catwoman Penguin they're all a part of it and so how do they play with each other going forward and you know Catwoman or Penguin might not even be in the Batman too. They might not serve a purpose to it, but I think the Joker in a small scale could be very valuable in that movie, in the story, in the, in the character development of, of Batman Bruce Wayne with Jason Todd in play. If you don't, I mean, like, cause there's always like, you don't need the Joker. You don't. And I don't, but I think you utilize the Joker to the Joker's strengths and the Joker's strength is crazy clown who kills Jason Todd. Right. And you're right. It's not. Uh, it's we don't live in that world anymore, thankfully, where superhero movies are just about the novelty of how is this villain gonna look on screen? Hey, uh, now it's more about the storytelling. And because of this, we can kind of rest easily knowing that Matt Reeves isn't gonna do it. You said and just throw in Scarecrow because somebody on Twitter really wants to see Scarecrow in his universe. Uh, he's gonna find reasons to put these people in. How they're gonna affect the world. How they're gonna affect Batman how Batman's going to affect them. Uh, We saw that symmetry so beautifully with the Riddler that it would be weird for him to just kind of toss that beautiful writing out the window for a sequel and just be like, oh, whatever, man, that. So uh, I, I'm, I feel like we're in good hands, even though I'm done with Joker. Like I I feel good with him being used in this world because I know it's going to mean something. I think the Joker thing, I like because a lot of people are like they're sick of the Joker. I know a lot of people say they're sick of the Joker, but everybody will go see the Joker. I think that the thing is though, it's like we've had a Joker in '89, then we had Heath Ledger, and then we had Joaquin Phoenix, and we had obviously Jared Leto. And Jared Leto kind of had like the origin thing going on, and we Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger didn't have an origin, but it was still like the beginnings of the Joker, and so was Joaquin Phoenix, right? And they're very heavily about who this character is. Even the Dark Knight, where they don't tell you who he is, you, it's all about who he, he is and isn't, right? It's like, he has his Rashomon way of doing things. And and I think people are kind of maybe tired of that aspect of him. But if you throw him in in a rogues gallery, and it's not just about him, it's about the greater villains of of, of Gotham, he can work because he exists in there and he's crazy. And he's a, because he's a lunatic, he can get away with things and he can drive because of... Like, the Dark Knight used him so beautifully... And that he drove the plot, right? It's like chaos, right? And 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 you can use that, but you use it small and subtly in the background of your overarching story, which it's kind of like the, the Riddler clues in the Arkham games. It's a side story. It's like the mm-hmm. side story. To, it's like, I have to get here, but the Joker's messing things up there. And, and I just think to, to make it not so cheesy, you make it a big event that's really going to traumatize Batman and something else for him to overcome to whatever his the whatever the end game for the Batman character is in this in this Reeves verse, it's I think he has to come to grips with the death of someone close. And I and it was almost Alfred, 
And I'm hoping it's never Alfred because that's not a character that should like every time even in this bat even in this Batman, I thought Alfred was the weak link of this. I thought um what's um Andy Circus was great and all, but I think the the character was the weak link of this movie in a lot of ways. Like I still feel like even when I watch it again, I'm like, he still needs a scene at the end. Just like one more scene, one more instead of them riding their bikes for an hour, just like cut to him <laughs> or something. Like that. But like it it I I, I you know, he almost died. So I think you just need, you need to go that extra step and it's not going to be him. It's going to be, you can, you can get away with it with Jason Todd. Yeah, exactly. See what happens to this Batman when he loses somebody close to him. Yeah. 